Nico and Jerome's doing up a little Q&A action ahead of Vikings versus Eagles on Monday Night Football. Uh, starting up at the top, uh, our guy Derek Baker. On Sunday, it seemed like Alexander Madison got a lot more work than we're used to seeing when Dalvin is healthy. What's your assessment of Madison's performance? And do you think O'Connell uh, is looking to use uh, Cook Madison's equal partners? Yada, yada, yada. So uh, I do think that O'Connell is very cognizant about Dalvin Cook and the fact that he hasn't had a, a full season uh, during his NFL career, had injuries at Florida State, and I think that he is going to try and keep a little bit off of uh, Dalvin's plate, especially some uh, of the more dirty in-between-the-tackles work, which is perfect for Madison's. And, and I think Madison's even added a little bit of power. I, I think he uh, looked even stronger uh, week one against the Greasy Grime and Green Bay Packers, a very formidable front, and they both uh, did nice work, uh, average of four and a half yards per carry. I think that I think O'Connell sees Dalvin as more as an offensive weapon as opposed to just a straight running back. So we'll, we'll see. Tristan D. Uh, we should give Greg the Leg Joseph more credit. Uh, it's finally nice to have a good kicker. Uh, he made a 56-yarder, I believe, in 59-yard preseason. Uh, we shouldn't take him for granted. Absolutely. Uh, the fact that Greg the Leg, he completely demolished uh, Gabe Burkich uh, in offseason work and completely ended the kicking competition. And the fact that, uh, again, if you take away Arizona last year, that's kind of tough. I mean, Greg the Leg, he did fantastic last season, man. I absolutely respect him. Uh, Shadow Flame Gaming. I believe that the Vikings special teams performance is underrated. It, it will definitely well. It, it was definitely well coached and played uh, throughout. Uh, what's your opinion on their performance? I think they did extremely well against Green Bay. I think Ryan Wright booted the ball out of the gym. Uh, of course, uh, Greg Joseph was fantastic. Plus, they were very aggressive coming after every single Packers punt. Uh, I thought for sure that C.J. Ham was going to block one, uh, but they will get a couple this season. And now. You have to play the game a little bit. If you're trying to block every single punt, uh, are they going to run some fakes? You know, what, what's going to happen? But I actually kind of like that. You're just daring a team to run a fake punt on you. Yeah, go ahead. You're probably not going to make it. Uh, All-Star Elite. Uh, do you think teams will catch on to all this motioning? And do you think that this is the only beginning for JJ or teams start paying a lot more attention to him? Well, uh, it is a bit of a game of cat and mouse, but... Motion really is a great equalizer for the offense. And once the defense is lined up, once it's called, and all of a sudden, two seconds before a snap, a guy shifts to the other side of the formation, or even just uh, mixing up and muddling uh, who's got who, if it's a man situation, it's going to create problems. And I don't think that this is something that uh, they'll catch up on because, I mean, look at the Rams. Um, this, minus the Rams-Bills game. And not so much, but yeah, the Rams uh, are, are certainly uh, up there uh, still in terms of uh, being able to scheme Cooper Cup open with the use of motion and whatnot. Uh, Westworld, <clears throat> with the age of uh, P squared and injury history to Booth and Dancer, how will depth at cornerback hold up? And uh, are there any external pieces you believe they might explore? Uh, not off the top of my head, uh, but the Vikings do have veterans uh, like Chris Boyd. They do have guys like Perry Nickerson. Uh, they do have uh, Duke Shelley uh, on the practice squad as well. So the Vikings, they do have a decent amount of cornerback depth, both on the roster and practice squad. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, also, ooh, uh, Caleb Evans, uh, one time. Uh, Samuel uh, Aker, what defensive uh, and offensive adjustments should the Vikings make when going up against the Eagles? I, I think that, number one, they got to stop Jalen Hurts running. I'm not too scared of him throwing, uh, but you are going to see a lot of RPO looks. You are going to see uh, a lot of uh, simplistic uh, offensive uh, passing schemes. But, I mean, Jalen Hurts running is a great equalizer. So I think the Vikings are going to sit a lot of zone. I think that they're going to spy him. Uh, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Brian Asamoah somehow got on the field. Uh, but, yeah, it come, it all starts and ends with Jalen Hurts' uh, 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 movement skills. Uh, Jonathan uh, Janke. Is the run defense, particularly D-line, something to be concerned about? Oh, uh, offensive adjustments? Keep hammering. Keep hammering. Also, uh, the Eagles are mo much more likely to man up against Jefferson with Slay and, and Bradbury. Uh, so I, I think that it's going to be a big-time game for Jefferson and KJ. Uh, Jonathan Janke, is the run defense, particularly D-line, something to be concerned about uh, like every year? Da, da, da. I am concerned about the run defense because no matter what it is, I mean, the, the personnel out there is fantastic. The scheme is good, but... They, it just seems like the last couple of years uh, you've been able to run on the Vikings. And that with the Eagles, you know, both with Hurts as well as you know with Sanders and Boston Scott and company, that is concerning for sure. Uh, Zach Hazelis, are, are the Vikings cornerbacks good and deep enough to sustain a playoff caliber team? They they need uh, they need uh, puck luck when it comes to health, you know, whether it be Dancer, whether it be Booth, et cetera. So, yes. Also, so the run defense, the, the way to get – teams out of uh running the ball is if the offense puts up 17 like really quick 
like a double digit lead, and then all of a sudden uh, a run first team gets out of their game, gets out of their element. That's the way you got to do it. Uh, Patrick's music. Uh, what do you think of the Vikings' lack of scoring in, in Q3, Q4? Was this due to the Packers or the Vikings? Uh, I think it, it was yeah, uh, adjustments at halftime. I think the Packers respect Joe Barry and that defense. They did get themselves un uh, But the Vikings were able to pick up some key first downs, were able to keep things moving, uh, and they were able to put up six key points. Uh, so you could say, yeah, there, there wasn't a, a touchdown the way that there was in the first half. Uh, but the Vikings uh, were able to salt the game away, uh, but they weren't just playing you know, a prevent offense, uh, for lack of a better term. They were still going for the gusto. They still were going for it and, and getting after it. Josh Imset, how long do you think Bradbury will last at the start of the season, and who would step in? Uh, I think as of right now, Austin Schlutman would be the guy to replace him. I think Chris Reed is more of a utility uh, you know, guard more than he is a center at this point. But, I mean, Bradbury, uh, if he cuts some pace the way that he played against Green Bay, even though he didn't grade the fantastic from PFF, uh, I think that the Vikings can do some good things up front. Uh, EB0203. Uh, what do you see the offensive role being for Kenne, uh, Rager, and Ty Chandler? I think KOC, blah, 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 uh, has to work them in, da, 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 da. Uh, I, think, I think the running back is going to be Dalvin and Madison. I, I don't think that there's going to be a specific role for Kenne or Chandler. Uh, Jalen Rager, you know, once he gets uh, put into the offense, I think his role is going to be what ISMs would have been. You know, wide receiver four, wanting some more, just run some nine routes, take the top off the defense, and we're, we're predicting. Putting it on the table. Uh, Jalen Rager, nine-route play action, 75-yard touchdown, first play of the game. Uh, Shaq Edwards, uh, what worries you more heading into week two secondary corners or offensive line play uh, in Bradbury? I would say corners, especially the way that A.J. Uh, Brown just lit up the uh, the Lions uh, week one. That, even though <sighs> the Eagles passing game basically was A.J. Brown and Goddard. I mean, Devontae Smith is a stud, too, and he's going to get his, but he had zero catches week one. But uh, I'm more concerned about the, the cornerbacks as opposed to offensive line right now. Uh, Daniel Brueggemann. Uh, everything uh, runs through JJ, period. Uh, loved it. Uh, everyone else was an afterthought, it seemed. Da, 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 da. Well, if your first option's open, you're going to go with your first option. And the Packers simply did not take away Justin Jefferson. Uh, but I, I do think that teams will sell out, try and stop J.J., and that's going to open things up for Thielen and K.J. and also Irv Smith. Uh, Andy Shong, uh, RIP to Russell Wilson, chance of ever defeating the Seahawks. Yeah, I mean, Russ had a chance to beat his former team. Uh, and then he would have checked the box on beating every team, but yeah, not so much. Uh, thoughts on Monday Night? I think that Nathaniel Hackett outthought himself, certainly. Uh, I think that the the Broncos gave away many great opportunities, you know, fumbling on the goal line, uh, Russ not being up to par, also using the same hand signals apparently that uh, he used when he was with the Seahawks, which is funny. Uh, I, I'm i not buying into the Seahawks, but it, it was nice for them to get that W. Uh, Tristan D. I hope KOC doesn't play down to his opponents. I, I don't want uh, to beat bad teams 13-20. Uh, to 20. Uh, I would like to see him score 50, uh, plus be able to keep up with teams like the Chiefs or Bills in scoring. Yes. Yeah, and uh, the Vikings are going to have some soft spots in the schedule. You know, let's be honest. Well, actually, no, Sh shouldn't be like that because I mean every single game is tough. But yeah, the Vikings, you know, taking on the Lions, taking on the Bears. Oh my! Even though the Bears might start out two and zero, fingers crossed. Uh, but w when you do have some of these games against lowlier opponents, just making sure that they have zero opportunity to win, and, and there's zero doubt. Leave no doubt, man. Uh, Eric Anderson, uh, am I too hyped about Greg the leg? No. No, I, I do think that the Vikings finally have themselves a, a legitimate kicker. Uh, Eli uh, Van de la Note. Uh, how do you feel about the new schemes now that you saw them in a live game? Uh, that counts. I think the defense is fantastic because I, I think that the disguises are legit. Where everything is muddled, you don't know who's rushing, you don't know what coverage they're in, uh, they bluff a lot. Uh, Ed Donatel, they... <sighs> I mean, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and a lot of these guys who have been veterans here have been in the same defense their entire career here in purple and seeing them in different roles, uh, but still familiar roles. You know, Harrison Smith doing Harrison Smith things, Eric Hendricks calling game, uh, middle of the field, down, down coverage. And I mean, it's just fantastic. And the fact that they're deep, the fact that they rotate, the fact that everyone is hyped up and fresh, just fantastic. Offensively, uh, the fact that You've never seen guys so wide open, and I don't think that that is a glitch. I think that is a feature. It is not a bug. Uh, I think that you're going to see that over and over and over again. I uh, know you. Also, it's easily the most comfortable I've ever seen Kirk Cousins in a Vikings uniform. Uh, would you rather sweep the Packers every year for the next 40 years or make it to the Super Bowl without guarantee of a win? I would take the Super Bowl 
and then roll the dice. Whatever happens, happens with the W. Uh, and the Vikings are going to be good for the next uh, thousand years, roughly. Uh, and the Packers are about to fall off the map. So, I mean, those uh, those sweeps may be a given. Uh, Enclave world. Uh, what do you think can be done to help shore uh, up the offensive line at this point? It didn't look bad, but another solid piece or two would ease my mind. Uh, I think it's more just getting experience with each other and communicating you know, at Ingram, getting up to speed. Uh, I think that they do have the makings of a really good offensive line. I, I don't think adding a free agent uh, outside cold now when you're in the middle of the season, I, I don't think that's going to fix things. Uh, Rob E., uh, who do you think the Vikings will most likely face in this season's Super Bowl? Well, e easy money would be the Bills, right? But uh, my, my Chargers pick is not looking great right now, but we'll, we'll see. Hopefully Justin Herbert's uh, ribs heal up faster than Tyrod's when he was uh, the Chargers quarterback. Jonathan Z., uh, what do we need to beat the Eagles? What are the main focuses on offense and defense? So on offense, just really getting after the Eagles cornerbacks. I mean, their pass rush definitely took a hit with Barnett being out, but they're still solid in the front seven. Uh, I think Jordan Davis and Fletcher Cox up the middle, interior pressure, that, that's going to be a big-time deal. Uh, but Jefferson getting uh, getting up um, uh, against Darius Slay and then Bradbury, I think that you know, the Eagles secondary is really good, man. And offense, uh, defensively, excuse me, uh, and the Eagles offense, it's all Jalen Hurts. It is all Jalen Hurts. It starts and ends with him. If you can stop Jalen Hurts running, like if Jalen Hurts has less than 50 yards rushing, I think the Vikings win pretty easily. 